This hydro system is making 850 watts continuously. Welcome to the Land of House YouTube channel. I'm Seth. I'm here in the mountains of Western North Carolina with Jay. This is his micro hydro system sponsored by Langston's Alternative Power. So if you're interested in micro hydro, continue watching. I'm gonna hand the mic over to Jay now and he's gonna walk us through his micro hydro system. So the first thing whenever you are putting in your micro hydro is site selection. This was about as far as I could go price-wise and logistically to get as much pressure at my turbines. Uh, as you can see, there's, there's a boulder field right behind me, and there's also a convergence where multiple water sources actually meet. This system up here with the Coanda screen, I went ahead and spent a little bit more money on because I did not want to keep walking up 100 vertical feet bi-weekly just to continue to check on the system. As you can see, I somewhat built a dam. I have angle iron pressed up and drilled into and tap conned to really hold as a backstop for all the water pressure and sediment and silt buildup that will happen. I also have a pond liner that will seal in a lot of the cracks and everything. A big part of the system and what I didn't want to happen was to completely run the stream dry. I think this size Coanda box uh, processes up to 1200 gallons a minute. Uh, and my system really only needs 100. Uh, we haven't had any significant rainfall here. I think we've had three inches over the past two and a half months, and we still get this kind of flow, which is significant and uh, essential to not running your system dry. Our pipe here is a three inch high density polyethylene pipe. It is UV resistant. It's pressure rated up to 180 PSI, I believe. Could be 160, I could be wrong. Um, the reason why I chose this pipe in, in, in general is because of its ease. I have two pieces of 500 foot long pipe and that, can, that starts at the intake and goes all the way to my turbines. I have multiple fittings along the entirety of my pin stock. I start out of the Coanda screen with a six inch to four inch coupling to a PVC. And then I use the Fernco couplings here at the top. A lot of folks think that the pipe is unsightly. I am one of them. So where you can see it from my driveway here, I made this little rock Irish knee wall with moss and everything to cover up the pipe and you know it provides a bit of insulation too during freezing temperatures. I have 500 feet this way and 500 feet this way. This is where they meet. These are a bear to get on. At the end of your pin stocks, you will have coils, just how they naturally are. You can lay them out in the sun as long as you want and they still will have that coil. You have to cut off a certain amount to where the pipe is straight for them to meet. If they don't, you will not get this on there. This is a section of pipe where it actually goes uphill. What happened was this summer, I had a big rain, three inches of rain in an hour, and the pipe, which was tacked up along the side and kept a level field, was just thrown wherever the water wanted to take it, and now it goes uphill slightly. All my tacks and straps that I had were just ripped out. I have two PMAs, permanent magnet alternators. I just call them turbines. Uh, and they are connected by individual uh, electrical lines, which are 10-2 that run from here all the way to the house. The run is about 200 feet. Um, so there might be a little bit of loss in the line, but not a lot. Each turbine has three nozzles. All three are quarter inch nozzles. The three inch pipe can only flow 100 gallons a minute at 72 PSI, right around there. My output of all six nozzles is right around 95 gallons a minute. So I'm running about as efficient as possible. The metal housing prevents water from splashing everywhere. This is where my 10 gauge wire comes in to one of my turbines. The other one is on the other side. Because the wire were to be exposed here, I decided to put it in conduit. 
Now that we've seen the water side of things, let's take a look at the inverter and the electrical side. We're inside now, and this is where all the magic happens. So the power comes in from the turbines right through here. This is 10 gauge wire, and it comes into what is referred to as a rectifier. From this rectifier, the AC power is created to DC power. That DC can then either be stored or used by the house. This is a DC breaker in order to cut power uh, that is necessary for safety. This here is a midnight solar surge protector in case I have a lightning strike or any sort of surge that happens outside of the home, it protects this expensive piece of equipment right here, quite necessary. Uh, also, coming out from the system, I have a ground rod with a bare copper wire that's hammered 10 feet into the ground outside. This is all attached. Very important for safety. This right here is my Schneider Connects XW Pro. I couldn't be any happier with this system right here. I am currently using 1.87 kilowatts, which is obviously more than I'm generating. However, with Hydro, when you sleep, it's charging your batteries. And these are my batteries here. Right now, I have two Life Power 4 100 amp hour batteries. These are both lithium ion phosphate batteries, and they do fairly well and they hold enough power. Uh, because I have micro hydro. This system is all scalable. So within the coming months, I will be buying four more batteries to increase my capacity so that I can run my well pump here at the house, which requires a little bit more because it's a deeper well. Right here is the mini PDP, uh, which is all I really need. Uh, this is my load center right here. The inverter loads come in. This is where the grid comes in. This is my disconnect. And then this is my PV disconnect. I am connected to the grid. So whenever my batteries get to a certain level that I have set, my, the grid will con connect and carry the loads while my turbines charge my batteries. And then once my batteries get to a safe level, then the inverter will connect back over to off-grid, and once again, we'll be running off of turbine power. This battery monitor checks this rat nest of wires down here, and basically lets me know how my batteries are doing throughout the day. We're at 51.2% now at 52 volts. This right here is my panel box. I also have a midnight solar charge protector on my AC side of the load as well. In case lightning hits a line somewhere not here, my loads are protected as well as my inverter because my inverter is connected to the grid side because I am not completely off grid. Uh, this is my pretty panel. This is my 40 year old panel. Right here is my power flow monitor. My house is currently using uh, about 1.1 kilowatt uh, and my batteries are producing 0.5 of that. I hope you've enjoyed watching this overview of a 850 watt micro hydro system. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this is sponsored by Langston's Alternative Power. So if you are looking to install your own micro hydro system, I'll have a link to his website in the description down below. Now I know every site is different, so you can uh, give Spencer a call and he will help you install your own system based on your specific needs. I'm Seth with Land a House and I will see you in the next video. Bye.